I'm going to start fresh. We are going to start lying down on our backs. That's where, that's where I think gentle should start today. <laughs> so go ahead and take your time and just lie on down. You can have those feet on the ground, feet wide, knees inversion, or you can have the legs extended all the way out. If you're not sure, you know, I always say try both of them on for size, kind of settle into one and take a couple of breaths there and settle into the second one, take a couple of breaths. And I think that is usually, usually a pretty good way to figure out what feels best today. Okay. And then once you get all settled in, any other little adjustments, little arms, shoulder blades, head, right? Do little wiggles and jiggles if you need to, to just kind of settle in. And then we're going to do that blueprint thing that I like to do. What I mean by that is we're going to scan through the back side of the body and, and what's in contact with the floor, what's not, just to kind of get a, an idea of the back side of our body. Right? So when you bring your awareness into the scalp or the, the skull, where the skull is making contact with the floor, are you more towards the crown of your head? Are you more towards the neck? Are you somewhere in between? And try not to judge it. Try not to change it. Just note it for right now, please. When you pay attention to the neck, is the neck arched up far away from the floor? Is it down on the floor, somewhere in between? Just kind of check for that. Notice. And then I'm going to bring your awareness to your shoulder blades specifically. Notice if you're more on the inner edge of the shoulder blade, are the shoulder blades fairly flat between the floor and your body? Or whatever is whatever it is that you observe, again, you don't have to change it. One's not better than the other right now. And then tune into that area that I call the kidney band. Is that up away from the floor, down on the floor? And by the way, I'm not mentioning it, but as we go through, you can always notice if one side feels more weighted than the other, the right side, the left, they don't have to be the same. We're not symmetrical beings. Yeah. And then go down to the low back. Notice the low back and its relationship to the floor. The sacrum. That's that triangular shape ball on the back of the pelvis you're laying on right now. And then if you have your legs extended out, you can scan through the whole backs of the legs, noticing your points of contact. If you have your feet on the ground, you're going to pay attention to the feet and what part of the feet are down on the ground. And again, it's probably different from right to left, or potentially, I should say, probably. And then the last bit is just the arms. They're not quite as important as that, you know, between the skull all the way down to the hips, but still check. And then just a couple of moments of the breath. Belly so soft, the belly floats. And even though I didn't bring all of it up, you can always tune into other parts of your physical body, right? Take a couple of moments to tune into where you are emotionally, where you are, uh, 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 what's it called, mentally. And then let's go ahead and let's start to move by all of us extending our legs out to straight. So if you did have your feet on the ground, go ahead and extend them all the way out and let's move there. Chris, and then from there, we're going to do that Baddha Konasana that I like so much. Whoever just logged down, would you, would you mind unmuting yourself one? And then we're going to drag that right heel back towards the pubic bone. I don't go very high. I go no higher than my left knee, that's for certain. And then I'm going to push my right heel forward. Now, if you're getting super sticky on your sticky mat, you could always put on a pair of socks or use a blanket under your yeah. And then we're going to alternate. So your left heel is going to pull up gently. Again, probably no higher than the right knee, if even. Left side's heavy. And push that heel forward. Nice and slow, friends. And inhale, right heel slides up. So now you know where you're going. Nothing too fancy here. Um, go ahead and just start to move in and out of these poses for yourself. Not poses, but I mean the from side to side version. Yeah. And just start to let that leg have a lot of weight when it goes from one side to the other. Yeah. And as that leg has weight, you're just letting that inner groin stretch. Okay. 
And then the next time that your right heel pulls up, you're gonna pause there and you're gonna let that right leg have its full, full weight. If that left hip lifts because of it, please let it. We are not stabilizing the pelvis right now. And then you might even, if this is okay with your knee and your hip, you're gonna really gently, if I could, I'd put my hand underneath the outside of your right knee and I'd have you really gently push into my hand. Oh, my hand's not there. Imagine my hand there and just really gently push down into my right hand. And notice what happens muscularly in that right side, right, that hip thigh area. And release that pressure. And then you're gonna use the inner groin muscles to bring that knee up. My right foot goes on the ground, yeah? And my knee points up to the sky. I'm speaking very slow today. I apologize. I'm a little slow. So then now we're going to try to find add this movement. We're going to let that right knee move out to the right. Let the left hip lift if it wants to right now. Yeah. Push down gently and then pull up. Use that inner knee like you're pushing into my hand on the inside now. We'll do that one more time. Go ahead and move out. Act like my hand is on the outside of your knee and you're pushing into my knee the whole time. It's almost like those machines that you have in the gyms, right? And then my hand's on the inside of your thigh, and I'm going to push into that, that hand as I push your thigh down. And then once you get to that center, you're going to hug the right knee in and just simply put your hands, interlace your hands around the shin and give yourself a little squeeze. And then go ahead and put that foot down. You can go the long way, letting that leg fall out. It's the gentle array, by the way. And push that heel forward again, and then your right leg is back in full extension. Pause for just a moment before we work the left side in that way. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull the left heel back <clears throat> or up a little bit. Let that left thigh get heavy and just pause in here. Nothing adding on at this moment. We're letting the right hip lift. We're not regulating or controlling the right hip at all. We're letting that left hip get really heavy thigh. And then imagine my hand on the outside of your left knee. I want you to really gently push down into my hand. It's just a small movement that starts to engage the outer thigh, the outer hip. And now we go into that next movement. Imagine my hand on your inner knee now and push into my inner knee and there's a resistance. I'm pushing your knee out and your knee is pushing back into my hand. And now my hand goes on the outside of your knee. You push down into the outside of my hand, which is pushing up. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, just let it go. You can let the right hip lift, by the way. One more time, I'm gonna push into that imaginary hand on the inside of my right thigh and then push out to let that leg move back down. <clears throat> this one will hold when we get to the top. So push into that imaginary hand and come all the way up. And then once you get there, you're gonna hug that left knee in. You can interlace around the, the shin or behind the thigh and just give yourself a little hug, let that left low back round. And again, to come out of it, I'm gonna suggest you put the foot down, let the leg move wide and then slide that foot out and then just pause for a moment here. And just notice, we're not going to scan the whole back body, but we did a blueprint. So notice your, your sacrum here and your low back and your low floating ribs that week. And just kind of see if those have changed at all, the relationship to the floor. Now, adding on, we're going to go ahead and we're going to let that right heel. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I have one thing to add on. Put your left foot on the ground with the knee bent. I should have left this there probably. Pull the right heel up, and then you're going to let the left knee fall over towards the right. So it's kind of a version of windshield wiper. Like you're going to let the left knee lift up to the sky. <clears throat> the right heel pushes all the way back out to where it started, extended leg. So that's the pattern, yeah? Pull that right heel up a little bit, right leg wide. Let the left knee fall over to the right. And if you don't get it the first couple times, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. We'll do it a few times. Bring that knee up and push that heel out. It's been a bit since we've worked this way, yeah? And again, pull that heel up, right knee goes wide, my left knee falls over to the right, my head can maybe turn to the left if I like that. Come back to center and back to what's neutral, extended right leg, left knee towards the ceiling. We'll hold this one. Right heel pulls back, knee wide, and left knee's gonna fall over to the right. Maybe look to the left. And then if this feels all right with your body, you're gonna put your right foot on the front, the top of your left thigh, right above the knee, the patella. And then I'm gonna use that right foot and I'm literally gonna pull my left knee forward to the right, right? So I'm not pushing it down to the ground, I'm lengthening it forward, trying to pull out of my left side waist. I feel it in the front of my hip, right? Maybe my low back a little bit. Wherever you feel it is valid, as long as it's not pain. 
bring that right foot down. Let's bring the left knee up, extend the right leg all the way out, and then let's do the same with the left leg. We're gonna let the left leg fall out and push it forward. So just super soft kind of um, flappy silt seaweed. You know, I love that kelp version, um, um, vision, whatever that works. <laughs> Pull the right heel back, let that right knee move up to the sky. Why well, I can't think of the dang word right now, it doesn't matter. I'll let it go, Crystal Joy, I can't. Hold the left heel back, left leg wide. So now we're gonna go into the other side. The right knee falls over to the left. So we're adding a twist into what we've already done. Let the right knee lift up and that left leg's gonna slide back out. <clears throat> yep. Left heel slides up and that right knee falls over. Maybe the head turns to the right. <clears throat> and right knee slide, it moves up. Slide that left heel forward. We've got about two more of yeah. So the left heel first, knee wide, right leg falls over, head maybe turns right. Yeah. We'll hold the next one when we get there, folks. So just go ahead and move through the motion now that you know what it is. And then when you get into it, you're going to pause. And you're going to just gonna stay here in our regular old windshield wiper, this variation of it. Maybe put the left foot on the top of the right thigh today. So not the side facing the ceiling, right? And what would be the top if I was laying on my, on my back? And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push with my left foot and I'm gonna lengthen my right knee forward to the left. So hopefully that's making sense. If not, just go to whatever feels comfortable and right for your body. Take one more breath from here and bring that left foot down. Let's go ahead and slide the left leg all the way out, bring the right knee up. And then again, we're gonna let the right knee move wide and then slide it all the way forward. Just kind of sticking with that motion we started with last week. Arms can come down a little bit and pause and notice your relationship against the floor. Again, we had that blueprint pose where we paid attention and we're just gonna see if that shifts and changes from any of the work that we do on the floor. Without judgment, hopefully. Go ahead and pull that right heel back, let the right knee move up, foot down on the ground. Hopefully this is getting familiar. Let the left knee move wide, put the foot down, left knee moves up to the sky. Both my feet are on the ground, my knees are bent, yeah? Now, moving into a rolling bridge, we'll do two of these, then we're going to do an add-on. I'm going to go ahead and push into my feet. I'm going to let my tailbone get light, and I'm going to try to lift up one vertebrae at a time without getting too forceful with my spine, right? I don't have to lift high right now. Exhale, rolling down one vertebrae at a time. So we're just trying to articulate our spinal, our, our vertebrae, right? And then again, just like that, I push into my feet. My tailbone rises first, then my sacrum, low back, my back, upper back-ish, yeah? And exhale, reverse it, upper back, mid back, and sacrum. And the last thing to release will be the tailbone. Now, this might not be right for everybody. So if not, you're going to do what we just did and just reach one arm overhead and then the other and alternate. But if it's okay, we're going to do a little roll action. And hopefully that'll make sense to you. You're going to go ahead and you're going to lift up. And as you reach your right arm overhead, you're going to roll onto your left shoulder. And you're reaching kind of beyond your left shoulder on a diagonal. Right? and roll back down. Again, if that's not right, you're gonna leave both shoulders on the earth and just reach the arm overhead, yeah? As I roll up, my left arm reaches overhead, I roll onto my right shoulder, and I reach over on a diagonal above my right shoulder. And I'm gonna roll back down. If you don't wanna put the arms in it at all because your shoulder girdle has any pain, don't do any of them, right? Reaching up with the right arm, I roll onto my left shoulder. I let my head stay on the ground and just rolls over my head, right? So I keep my neck super soft and I roll back down. Again, if it's not making sense, do what does, please. Rolling up, I roll onto my right shoulder. I reach my left arm over to the right on a diagonal. And roll back down. We're gonna do that one more time, assuming that feels okay, whatever, ver whatever version you're doing. Rolling up, I reach my right arm over my left shoulder on a diagonal. I'm rolling onto the left side of my head and shoulder and rolling back down. It's almost a massage for your outside of your shoulder too. In the long run. <laughs> I reach my left arm over on a diagonal towards the right and roll back down. So let's roll back down wherever you were and let's just pause for a moment. I'd like to do another <clears throat> upper back opener. So you're gonna roll onto, um, let's just say whatever side body works so you're facing the device and I'll just talk about top and bottom. You can always put a pillow or a blanket underneath the head. I'm going to use my bottom arm. It might be your bicep with the arm extended. It might just be a bent elbow with your hand under your head, but let your neck be soft is the main point, right? Be super soft in the neck. My knees are bent, so my low back has no, um, no chance of injury. And I'm gonna reach and slide that top 
arm forward. It's arm circles, nothing too fancy. We've been here before. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to start to reach that arm over my head like a rainbow arc. And if that's as far as I need to go and I'm in pain, I'll just do that a number of times. Otherwise, I'm gonna sweep my arm behind me. I'm gonna roll my top shoulder back and down until that arm sweeps down by my hip, my top hip, and I come back to where I start. Yeah, so take your time with that. Don't go too fast. Go nice and slow and find your edges. Do another one this direction if that's feeling good. Again, feel free to roll it open into a twist as much as you'd like to in your particular body. And I'm not saying your fingers have to stay on the ground, but it's almost like I'm tracing a circle with my fingers on the ground. Now go ahead and switch and go the other direction. So I'll go down to the hip first. And then I'll roll my shoulder open if that feels all right. My, my body, I should say, my ribs. And I roll over and then I reach overhead, you know, et cetera, yeah? And you've got about maybe one more of those if that's feeling okay. Again, if I had a place where I had pain in my shoulder, I would just go right before the edge of the pain and sweep back down and forward again. And I wouldn't take the full shoulder roll, right? I don't believe that's a healthy thing for shoulders that are in pain. And then once you get to the top, we're back to the neutral, I should say, with the arm in front of you, you're going to pause. Now we're going to stretch the quads while we're here, just because why not? It's a great place to get. We're going to bring that top knee into the chest and grab the ankle. And then we're going to reach that top knee down to the foot side of the mat, the bottom. I often call that the bottom side of the mat, right? And then as my knee reaches down, I'm going to take that frontal hip point and I'm going to pull that frontal hip point up towards the head side of my mat. And hopefully you're all squarely in your quads right now and they're saying hello. If the knee needs to be a little forward for you, that is fine. If you need to use a strap, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. These beautiful bodies, we treat them with respect and love, hopefully. I, I don't always. I didn't for a long time. I'm trying. I'm learning. Baby steps. Okay, so now you're going to go ahead and I'm going to ask for a little bit of work because I'm a jerk. <laughs> I tricked you. So clamshells, you probably know them. We've done them at the gym. You can always bring those top fingertips down to the ground or hand if that keeps you solid. You can put the hand on the hip um, um, if it's available and push that hip down so the hip doesn't lift up to the shoulder. Hopefully that'll make sense in a second. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to keep your toes together, but you're going to lift the top knee off the bottom and bring that down. You don't have to go high. People think it's all about how high you get. That's bull crap. As I lift my knee, I want you to imagine I have my hand on that outer knee. So, oh, that's interesting. We've done this motion before, right? But it's a different position of gravity. And I'm going to push down into an imaginary hand if I want a little extra resistance. And if you're already done 10 of these, slow your roll. I'm going to lift that knee up. I'm going to keep my hip down away from my top shoulder and also from moving back behind me and I'm going to move it down. You can see that I'm not lifting very high. Right? I'm lifting just above my hip joint. For me personally, that's where I stay stable in my hips. And holy crap, my glutes are still working. I'm not missing anything. And I'm going to push down into an imaginary hand. The next one, you're going to push up into my hand, my imaginary hand, and you're going to pause and you're going to hold there. And I call this pulsing. I'm barely moving. You probably can barely see me. And I'm going to move up on nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and bring that down. So hopefully we feel warmth here without it being like cramping, horrible pain. <laughs> Debatable for me. Go ahead and push that heel down. You're going to straighten the leg. So now I'm in the shape of an arrow, not a pipe. My bottom knee is going to stay bent today. We're not doing crazy pants work. My heel is hovering at about hip level above the, the, the top hip, um, above the earth. And if that feels fine, you're just going to stay right there and you'll work that. If you need to put a block under it, please do to support it. Otherwise, I'm going to try to lift that leg without my top hip moving up towards my shoulder. And I can put my hand on my hip to ensure that's not happening. And I'm going to lower back down. I'm going to try to keep that alignment the best I can in my body. If I need a bend, I take it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lift that leg up. I'm going to tone my low belly so my low belly is supporting me here, right? Again, my idea is when we go into these motions, go again is that you're recruiting as many muscles as you can. So it's not just one thing doing all of the work. Yeah. We're going to hold the next one up just so you have fair warning. So we're on about number four, I believe. My toes are pointing straight forward this way. And then I'm going to pulse up on nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bend that knee, place it back on top of the bottom leg. I was going to give you a direction to left, but I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Roll onto your backside body. Pause there for a moment. Whatever position you had at the very beginning of class, feet on the ground or legs extended, take that version again. 
and just notice A, the asymmetry from right to left right now, having only done one side, yeah? And maybe you don't feel that and that's okay. And then also, you know, has your relationship to the floor changed? And it might be different from one side to the other at this moment. Maybe the right side feels heavier or lighter or et cetera, right? So you can probably just roll over to the other side. I'm going to make the big move and turn my whole body so that I can stay facing y'all in case you need to see something, yeah? <clears throat> but do what's best for you, by all means. Feel free to use something under the head. Please use something under the head. Otherwise, the neck's in a really, you know, cranky position. And then from there, I keep my knees bent. It's not about my low back. I'm going to bring that top arm, my new top arm, out in front of me. And we're doing those circles. I'm going to sit down just a little bit here. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to start to go over nice and slow. We are in absolutely no rush. Feel free to roll your rib cage open and let that shoulder move back behind you. Again, imagine that you were tracing a beautiful circle in whatever color you want it to be all the way around your body on the floor. And I'm about in front of my body again, and I'm gonna do one more that direction. You don't have to be in my exact timing, but you know, my one request is try not to speed through this. Try to move nice and slow. Usually we get less pain if you have discomfort in your shoulder, right, if you take the time. And then you'll also stop before you get in that painful place and hopefully then just swing back around the other way you came, right? Maybe going the other direction. I'm not laughing at the pain in your shoulder, by the way. I'm just laughing so often we move straight into it and we're moving so fast without any mindful awareness that we do more damage instead of giving it the space it needs. Like my left shoulder's actually been hurting me, but if I move really slow, I can do this and it feels quite delightful. But if I'm moving fast, boy, there's that pulled, little pulled muscle from trying to learn how to roll kayaks that talks to me a lot. So, And then once you end up with that arm back in front of you, just pause there for a moment. We're gonna go into that top quad, our new top quad. Bring that leg in, top leg, grab ankle, a foot, or strap it. Reach that knee down to that foot side of your mat. Take that frontal hip point as it is bone. Pull it up towards the head side of your mat and just say, good morning, quadriceps. I love you so much. Or whatever you wanna to say to your quads. But please let it be positive. <laughs> I have one request. <laughs> And then go ahead and bring that leg back to where it started. I have bent knees. Yeah. I'm going to maybe put my top hand on my hip to both hold it down away from my shoulder and make sure it doesn't move back behind me at all. I can leave my hands up on the ground if that's better. Go ahead and lift your top knee. My toes stay together. Again, these are clamshells. And I bring that down. Now add the resistance if it's making sense. Push into my hand, which is on the top of your knee. This is all imaginary. I know that. Hopefully you know that, right? But it's helpful. And then my hand goes to the inside of your knee and you push down into my hand. I'm kind of showing what I mean by that if it doesn't make sense. My hand's on the outside of your knee. You're going to push up. You don't have to go high at all. Probably just a couple of inches if even above your hip joint. And then my hand moves inside your knee and you push down. Yeah. So let's do that again. Push up. Tone that low belly. When you're at the top, you're going to pause. And we are going to pulse small pulses to the ceiling. Nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Bring that knee down and pause for just a moment. Hopefully feeling some warmth in that outer, I call it the outer hip, the glute. It's, it's, I, I use both of those terms for the same area, right? If not everybody knows what glutes are. I'll go ahead and reach that heel up. You can't see my leg, but it's straight in the, in the shape of an arrow. And my bottom leg is still bent, right? So I have a slightly gentler version. Put a block under there if you cannot support your leg being at the height of the hip, right? And then I'm going to put my hand maybe on that hip and I'm going to hold it away from the shoulder because it's going to want to jerk out for this one. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lift my foot up, my leg up just a little bit and bring it back down, yeah? And I'm going to slowly inhale it up and I'm going to keep my low belly toned in, my low back, that whole corset tuned on, turned on, bringing it down. If you want to imagine resistance, push up into my hand, which is now on the outside of your foot. And bring that back down. And then you've got one more of those. Lift that up. And then whatever your height is, I'm putting that in your foot. You're pausing and you're pulsing up on nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bend the knee, bring it back and pause for just a moment. <clears throat> Pardon me. <laughs> eating dairy. I'm trying not to, but I'm still eating plenty of it. And then I had a bunch of carbs last night, so I'm 
body's like, Bleh. go ahead and roll onto your back or pause. <clears throat> Those feet wide, knees lean in or legs extended out, whichever version you started the class with, go back there one more time. We have one more thing on our back, but I want you to tune in again to that blueprint and if anything has changed since the beginning of class. And you don't have to be like, this is great, this is terrible. You're just noticing. Maybe the neck was, you know, <clears throat> way up, away from. Maybe the shoulders were high up. Now they're lower. Maybe the low back was flat. Now it's got an arch, et cetera. Okay. Last thing from here. One little se se sequence again. Walk your feet. Put your feet on the ground. Feet hip distance. <clears throat> we're going to let our right heel push up to the sky. And we're just visiting the hamstrings, right? So I want you to just pause there. You can interlace if you want to. We won't be here for long. Push that heel up and just say hi to the hamstrings briefly. Knee can be bent. Now, I, without using your hands, I want you to turn your right toes to the right, but I want you to think of doing it right at your hip socket. Use all the muscles right around your ball and socket joint and turn that femur bone to the right. And then you're going to let that right ankle bend the knee, let that right ankle come to the left thigh. So it's thread the needle. It's just a different way to get in, and I'm asking for muscular action in the hip, yeah? Now, from there, without, before you lift up, hold your horse's buckles, keep the right foot flexed, let that right thigh move forward. Imagine my hand is on the outside of your knee. You're going to push gently into my hand with your leg and tone your low belly. Now, from there, go ahead and start to bring the legs in and interlace behind the left thigh. Of course, you can leave your foot on the ground if that's better for you. That was a great question. Thank you for asking, right? Now, you're going to push your thigh, your left thigh, into your hands. Your hands are going to pull back into the thigh. And that's not at all about that right glute. That is about lengthening your spine and softening your shoulders and toning a bunch of muscles along the spinal column. Yeah. And breathe from there. Now, again, if my hand was on the outside of your right thigh, don't do it so crazily your hips go all over. Keep your hips stable, but push actively your outer right knee into my imaginary hand and take a breath. Now, put that left foot down, but keep the right leg where it is. Walk your left foot over towards the right side of your mat, the opposite side. This is that weird one that we sometimes do. It's a weird one, I know. Roll your uh, leg, your outer left leg down. I'm going to face the camera with my legs so you can see a little better. And then I keep that ankle hooked. And again, if my hand was on the outside of your right knee, you would be pushing your right knee into my hand, and that right knee would move down towards your left ankle. It's called double pigeon pose, right? Only if it's right for your knees and your hips. If it's not, why on earth are you doing it? Right? Take a breath. A modification, you might just do Sukhasana with the right shin crossed in front of the left. I'm showing that variation in case you're not getting this one or this one doesn't feel right for you. Yeah? But otherwise, stick with double pigeon if you can. Keep pushing into my imaginary hand outside your right knee. And then you're going to let your left leg bring everything up. Walk that left foot over again. Bring the right foot down and just pause for a moment. So I'm going to show this angle again for this side. So uh, hopefully it's not confusing and it's helpful. You're going to reach your right heel, left heel up to the sky. I got a mirror. And then from there, I'm going to use the muscles around my left hip joint to turn my toes and my thigh, all of it. But I want you to move to the femur, right? You can just see the most in the toes. Bending the left knee, placing the ankle on the right knee-ish or somewhere thereabouts. And before you come into this next piece, this is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to keep the left foot flexible. And then imagine my hand outside your left knee, pushing that left knee into my hand. We've done that action three times now. Yeah. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to keep that low belly toned and bring the legs in and interlace behind the right thigh. And this is the first move, right? So we're going to push into the hands. The thigh in the hands. The hands pull back into the thigh. <clears throat> and again, that gives us an isometric that tones a whole bunch of muscles through and around our spine and our shoulders can push them soft. Take a breath and just explore that. Maybe I'm a liar. Maybe none of that's happening in your body. And then you know. Now you know. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to bring that right foot down to the ground. Walk the right foot over to the left and lay your outer right leg down. Imagine my hand on your outer left knee, and I want you to push into my imaginary hand. So double pigeon. If this doesn't feel right for you, or you're just not understanding what I mean, you would do sukhasana legs, supine sukhasana. That's the left shin crossed in front of the right. 
either version, I would love for you to really gently push into that imaginary hand outside that thigh. It doesn't have to be 100% or agro. It shouldn't be, quite honestly. I try not to use the word should, but this is one area where I am going to. <laughs> Take one more breath. Don't shut all over my friends. And then from there, you're going to go ahead and you're going to let the right knee lift everything up. Walk your right foot over to the right again ish. Bring that left foot down. And one more time, take that position you started the class with. And notice your back body against the floor. Yeah. Maybe notice emotionally, mentally, breathing, all that stuff we checked into at the beginning and just see if anything is changing. Now walk your feet into hip distance. We're going to lift our hips and sit on our hands. If that's not right for your wrists, your hands have your arms outside, right? And then sit back down on the hands, wrists, etc. Push the heels up. It's our teeter-totter version. As my heels move forward, I tone my belly and I push into my elbows and push into my elbows and push into my elbows and I teeter-totter. So we're going to come on the hands and knees for cat cow. Lauren or anyone with knee sensitivities, you could always do cat cow from the seated position if it's not okay to be on your knees today, okay? Otherwise, if it is, I'll meet you on hands and knees. I'm going to show that version next. From hands and knees, shoulder blades down the back, chest forward. Right? And you go into the arch, you would be arching. Listen. Exhale, pull the belly up, round the spine up to the sky. Nice and soft. Soft neck especially. Inhale, shoulder blades down the back. You'll notice I'm moving a little slower today. We're breathing a little longer. And exhale. Hopefully, it's a pace that is working breath-wise for you, not, not necessarily movement-wise. I'm trying to get the movement to match the breath today. And one more time, inhale. I'm really um, trying to put a big emphasis on long, deep breaths today. And round that spine. Soften that neck. And then pause when you're in your rounded position, whatever that is for you, seated or kneeling. And then you're going to push into your hands. You're going to try to round that area between the shoulder blades up to the sky. If you're choosing a seated version, you can even interlace your hands, push your palms into imaginary wall. I'm showing that version right now. And that's going to get that upper back a little deeper, potentially. And then inhale, come back to your neutral. We're all going to make our way to standing. My friends from hands and knees, you can curl your toes under, walk your hands by your knees, push your hips up to the sky, or at least try that challenge. We've been working that line for quite a while now. Hands on the shins, reaching the chest forward. And that's not to say you should be able to do it. Nothing like that. I've been not implying that. Exhale, folding down. But often we get familiar with something and it becomes available, yeah? One more time, hands on shins, come about halfway up, reaching the chest forward, and you're taking care of yourself and you're staying in this upper back bend, not folding in, I imagine. Exhale and folding in. Let's all come up, hands on hips, elbows up, reach the chest forward, tone the low belly. We're standing. Woo! Okie dokie. Let's go ahead and I'm going to bring us right into some standing poses, believe it or not. So you'll want to face the long edge of the mat for this first part. We're going to go ahead and we're going to step our feet nice and wide. Sorry, I'm trying to get my hair to stay up. It's wanting to move all over. And then we're going to turn. We're just going to do a short little sequence. We're going to not hold anything too much. We're going to turn our left toes in and kick that left heel back. And we're going to turn the whole right leg out. Now from there, you can leave your hands on your hips or you can inhale the arms out wide. Inhale. And with an exhale, go ahead and bend into warrior two. We're going to come in and out of this three times just so you know. And inhale, go ahead and straighten that leg. And exhale, bend your right knee right over the second toe, hopefully somewhere about there. Inhale and straighten. I'll leave my hands on my hips. Exhale, go ahead and bend on in, right? Pick that right hip point up, drop that left hip in. My Tuesday friends, that's what we worked on on Tuesday. And then from there, right? Maybe go ahead and move into reverse warrior and hold that for just a moment. My left hand comes down and I reach my right arm up. I inhale, I get long in that right side body. And then we're going to lean over and bring it right into side ankle. My forearm comes to my leg, the left hand on the hip, shoulder and elbow back. And then maybe I extend that arm all the way over. Maybe I don't. Maybe I leave my hand on my hip. And maybe I look up. All of these are maybes. You hear that, right? You don't have to do it. There's no rules here. Inhale, coming back up. I'd say if there was a rule that I could put out there, it would be to take care of yourself and be compassionate, kind. Straighten the leg. 
hands on hips, turn the toes forward. Go ahead and turn your right toes in or keep the heel back. Whole left leg turns out. Hands can be on hips or arms can be out. Inhale, with an exhale, go ahead and bend that left knee. And inhale, straighten. I always feel like the first one's kind of feels, right? Exhale, then start to notice if the ankle is over or the knee's over the ankle, going over the second toe business. Yeah. And inhale, come on up. We're going to hold the next one and move into our series. Exhale, I just adjusted and my foot back so that I'm a little more aligned over my ankle. Maybe those arms come out. Right hand comes. Oh, sorry, pelvis first before we go into a reverse warrior. My bad. Pick that left hip point up and drop that right hip in. That was Tuesday's work. Yeah. Now maybe reverse warrior. Right hand down. Left arm is going to lengthen up and out. Get length in that beautiful left side body. And then lengthen it all the way out, bringing that forearm down onto the leg. Right hand on hip for a moment. Roll the shoulder and elbow back. Rotate the ribs. And then maybe that right arm reaches all the way over. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you turn and look up. Inhale. Exhale here and then inhale up into warrior two. Try to keep the knee bent for that last little challenge. Straighten the legs, hands on the hips. Turn the toes forward. And we're going to take a leg break. Heel toe, step, or jump. I'd say jumping's not too gentle necessarily. <laughs> so you might just step the feet in. <laughs> Unless you're feeling very sassy this morning. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to step back out. I want to do one more. We're going to do a wide legged. I'm going to stand sideways so you can see my profile, but you're still going wide. Your feet are kind of parallel like the railroad tracks. Hands on the hips, elbows back, chest reaches forward and up. It's kind of like that upper, or like that cow pose would be a great way to think about it today. All right, and then from there, I'm going to bend my knees a little bit for the transition. I'm going to ask for a little work. When we get parallel to the ground, I'm going to ask you to stay there. Don't bring your hands to the ground today. Right? And you're going to use your hands. You're going to push your hips back behind you as you reach your chest and crown of the head forward. Keep that out of your shoulders, by the way. No upper traps. Tone that low belly in. Right? Tone that whole corset in towards the center of your body and through you uh, 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 up towards the crown of the head. Right? So pulling into the center of the body and also pulling up towards the head. Take another breath here. Shoulders lifting high. And now if you want to bring your fingertips down, bend your knees until your fingers reach the earth. And you can stay up high or put your hands on a chair. That would be a great way to stay high and get some work. Maybe you straighten the legs a little bit. Maybe you don't. And then maybe, maybe you fold in. And if you have glaucoma, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, right? There's some contraindications to forward folds. And you would just keep yourself higher. Again, maybe hands on a chair or a coffee table. Take another breath. And then we're going to walk our hands forward under our shoulders again. Reach the chest forward, bend the knees, tone the belly, hands on hips, elbows up. Come on up, 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 up. Heel, toe, step. Come into center. I would like to do one more standing pose, tree pose. So if balance is an issue, we've got these amazing friends called walls. I'm actually holding a china cabinet over here. It's kind of fancy. <laughs> but feel free to be free. And actually, I'm going to step back so I'm on the hardwood floor because carpet's pretty padded and makes it more difficult for me to balance. Spread the right toes super duper wide. That's what you're going to have on the earth. And then from there, do you remember that glute work, that clamshell work we did? Yeah, I'm smiling because it's like, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> so before we even lift this leg, we're going to hug that right glute in like we're doing a clamshell. And or like we were lifting it. Either one would work if one of those correlates. Bend the left knee, move the left knee out without the hip moving anywhere. And then you can suck that in with the toes on the earth. You can put the foot on the leg anywhere but the knee joint. And if you want to go up higher, I'm never going to take it away from you. But it is a gentle class. So you might explore being a little lower and what that does for the alignment of the pelvis. Yeah, eh, just a thought. Go ahead and keep that right glute hugging in. Keep that low belly, that whole corset moving into the center of your body and lifting you through the crown of your head as if it could. Keep the shoulders out of that. And if your arms would like to become branches and play in any way, you got your hands at your heart version. You got your arms out. Some people like it wide and some people like it narrow. I'm an in-between kind of a gal, right? Play with it. What feels really good for you? 
and use that wall if you need to. There is absolutely no shame in holding walls and letting them support us. Take another breath. There's no shame in calling in a support system. That's what I'm trying to learn this lifetime. Haven't been great about it. Bring that left foot down. Spread those left toes super duper duper wide. Right? Left hip. Pull that glute in. Bend the right knee. Right knee moves wide, and then go ahead and bring that foot in to wherever it would like. As soon as I lift my foot, my whole body starts to turn. I'm not saying that's you. That is a tendency for many bodies, right? Because uh, my leg has got some <laughs> issues in my hip in it. So I'm going to keep my leg a little lower today, and I'm going to concentrate on keeping my pelvis neutral, right? And keeping the left glute hugging, toning the belly, the corset moves me all the way to center and up. And maybe then my hands play. Maybe they don't. My arms. Again, where does it feel like it's the right place for you to work today? It doesn't have to be the same on both sides. And if I could give you one area to focus on, it would be your left buttocks. Take another breath. And set that down. So we're going to come on down to the ground. You can go ahead and just sit down all the way. If you want to come through... Um, but before you do, just know your other option. We're going to step our feet as wide as our mat and come through a squat. That is not available for every hip in this, in this class. I know that, yeah. And for some of my video friends. But if you want to, you're going to step your feet as wide as your mat and turn your feet out at about a 45 degree. And we're just going to use our hands on our thighs. We're going to tone the belly in. And we're going to start to squat down, right? And we're going to try to bring the buttocks down as low as we can. If we need something else behind us to let us down or we need to come up and down a different way we do, if we can drop the buttocks down and in, that depends a lot on knees and hips, friends, even ankles have a, have a say in this. My arms are going to come in between my knees and I'm going to push my knees and my arms together. That should be familiar at this point. Pulling the, 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 the what are they called? Thumbs, the uh, expendable, right? You're going to pull them towards the heart, chest towards the thumbs and lengthen the spine. Maybe it feels kind of groovy to rock a little bit from right to left. By the way, I can still do the same shape sitting on my buttocks with my feet wide. And then we're going to come down to the ground. All of us, all of us, bring the buttocks down, please. Let your legs come straight out in front of you. And we played with this version. Um, I'm going to actually move my mat back a little bit so I don't get on my sticky mat. Be towards the edge of your sticky mat. We're going to do that thing. We're going to try to lift our legs and use some of those leg muscles. Last bit of strength here, friends. I'm trying to sneak it in between all of our socks. So my fingertips can totally come behind me for a support system. And we're going to do the bent knee version, all of us. We're going to bend the knee. And we're going to keep the foot flexed. We're going to traction that heel back. Huh, this is what we did at the beginning of class, right? It was out to the side, but same idea. Now I'm going to try to lift that leg, and I'm going to try to shift it over to the right and put my right heel down. And I'm going to push, and I'm going to slide out. I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to pull it back. My weight is on the earth. My weight is on the earth. My weight is on the earth right here, wherever your edges. I pick it up and try to use that corset, and I bring it right back to center, set it down, and I push it all the way out. Same leg again, right leg. Pull the heel back. This time we'll add on. We're going to lift the leg. We're going to move it over to the right using the leg muscles. I'm going to set the foot down and I'm going to push that out. You don't have to have your hands up. I'm just trying to show you where I'm coming from, right? And then from here, we're going to bend that left knee, bring the heel in, supporting this leg <clears throat> if necessary with something so it's not hovering. I would, I just don't have fun stuff for me personally. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn towards my right leg. And I'm going to fold over that right leg. So this is that Janu Shirsasana we started practicing last Thursday, I think it was, maybe Tuesday. And I can bring both hands over that way. I can leave one in front of me. I can be a little more center if that's better for me. I'm going to turn my belly a little bit towards that right thigh if it's available. And I'm just going to take a breath from right here. Again, you can keep your body higher if you need to keep your your um, head above your heart, any of my friends with those contraindications. And I'm going to come up. I'm going to help my bent knee. I'm going to lift it up and send it out in front of me, but let, let's use strength. I'm going to pull the heel back, right heel. I'm going to lift the leg. I'm going to use all those muscles around my hip joint, set it down, and forward. We got one before we add on our stretch with this left leg. Pull that heel back. It's on the earth right now. I pick it up. I move it over. 
and I send it all the way out. If I keep my foot flex, this up and down part, this is knee strength right here, right? I pull that back, I'm really tractioning my knee over my second toes. I lift and now it's all about my hip. I move it over, now it's back to my knee. I'm gonna push that out. So if you're like, I don't need the gentle version, I could do it with a straight leg, you're getting benefits, right? Go ahead and pull that back, feel your quads, pull your kneecap up, right? And then lift it up, move it over, and send it out. Now stay there, bending the right knee, heel towards pubic bone-ish, supporting knee if necessary, turning body a little bit towards that left leg, whatever that is for you. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna start to fold over. And again, options, you could stay centered right through the center if that's better. You can bring both hands over towards that left leg. If you can get a baby bit of toning, if it's right for your body, not toning, uh, uh, turning your left, <laughs> your belly towards your left, Thigh. I believe I said that correctly. Um, you might feel that lower left side, right side back. Get a nice little stretch. Breathing. Soften that right hip. It's probably getting kind of crunchy. Mine does pretty much every time I do this pose. And then I'm going to lift my chest forward and come on up. I'm going to help my bent knee, my right leg, back to where we started, neutral. Now I'm going to work this. I'm going to pull the right heel back, foot flex. I'm going to use my hip joint to move it back where it was. And then I'm going to use my knee to straighten the leg all the way out. Now from there, I'm gonna move my mat back to where it started. We're gonna come down onto our back bodies, right? So you got that core line if you want it, which is simply grabbing the backs of the legs. If you wanna have your arms free, I'm gonna talk the gentler version. I'm gonna tone my belly in, and I'm gonna to try to round my low back into cat as I lower down one little bit at a time until I'm laying all the way down. I'm gonna bring those knees into my chest and put my hands on my kneecaps and I'm gonna circle my knees together. So it's that sacrum massage I love so much. I don't do this every day, but pretty, pretty close. <laughs> I love doing this one when I wake up in the morning and before I go to bed at night sometimes, just to get a little cool. And go ahead and go the other way. When my low back is really sensitive, I'll take the time to lay down and do this. And then we're gonna have our knees at the chest, separate them out away from each other in the shape of a V, moving forward together again and back down to the chest. So this is the one where I circle my knees in opposite directions. And now hopefully maybe, maybe we're feeling it more in the hip joints. All those, there are over 23 muscles, ligaments, and tendons that run into and through hip joints. That's great, that's grand manifestation. Go ahead and go the other way. Nice and gentle. Again, this is a gentle class, so try to remember that. And then when you're back by your chest, you're gonna leave your knees towards your chest and keep the arms out. Now, if you know it'd be better for you to have the feet on the ground, please take that. We're gonna do one more twist here. Let the knees, we're gonna rock. Oh, you're not gonna go all the way down. Rock the knees to the right. Let me start there, I'm not saying it very well. Come back to center, rock the knees to the left. So start with a pretty small rocking motion. And then you're just kind of gradually, you're still going back and forth in case you didn't. Um, I wasn't clear, right? Right to left. Um, get a little bit bigger with the motion. And so now we're not only rocking across the sacrum and the low back, but we're probably rocking a little bit across your kidneys, right? Or that area, the kidney pan area. And then if it feels right to you, now you'll let your legs go all the way over to the right the next time you end up moving that direction. These can totally come away from you if they'd like to. Maybe turning the head to the left. Where is the softest, gentlest version of this twist that you can find in the body where you're not in pain? Where maybe there's a stretch, but the body can soften into it completely, right? So that not one muscle has to hold on to protect you. I've been doing a lot of during this pandemic reminding myself that I'm going to say really I think the nervous system, everybody's nervous system could use that perspective. Go ahead and bring those knees back to center. You can bring the left knee up first and then the right as the softest version. And go back and forth again a couple of times before you land it, if that makes sense. So swish to the left and then back to the right. And then if and when that feels right for you, let the legs come all the way over to the left. Let them come on down. Knees can totally move away. Down the ground, you can turn your head to the right. And then where can you find a little home here for the next 
Uh, we'll be here for probably about five breaths or so, so that <clears throat> every muscle in your body can release. So that instead of there being something protecting, right, or feeling forced, everything can just soften. What just came into my head was, where does it feel like your whole body is on the same team? That's an interesting thing I'm going to have to explore. <laughs> so the knees are going to come up. I'm going to use the gentler version. My right knee is coming up first, and then my left leg is going to join. Now, if you would like to, we have time for a happy baby. If you want to go to Shavasana, feel free. But otherwise, you're going to go ahead, and you're going to let your knees come a little wide, right? You can grab your pinky edge, your toes, your ankles, your outer shins, the back of the knees. It might feel good to do that rocking motion. And I'm going to even encourage you, if it feels right, to do a full body rock. What do I mean by that? When I rock to the left, my right shoulder and hip both lift up, not just my hip. And my left knee catches me, so I don't go too far with this. And you can do that. Let the, let the knee catch you, and then you can even use it to kind of push off it gently to rock back through center to the other side. Right? So hopefully it doesn't feel like super muscular and effortful. And then can you soften the neck and the jaw and the tongue? And yes, this is a wonderful physical action but I'm interested again in that um, emotional connection for the nervous system. That rocking motion can be very comforting to many of us. And then once you feel like you've had enough of the rocking, come back to center. One more little piece of, um, I'm gonna call it work with, with air quotes. You're gonna go ahead, whatever point of contact you have, please, please keep that point of contact. So my hands are gonna pull my legs down, but my legs are gonna push up into that, right? So there's a resistance, it's a push pull again. I love isometrics, you guys should hopefully know that. <laughs> you can just get so many more muscles benefits than just the one little thing, right? So as I push my legs up, I pull, my hands pull my legs down, and there's this beautiful um, contraction of that legs down in the hips. Now go ahead and release that pressure, and if you feel like you need anything else while you're there, take it. I'm going to do one more thing before my Shavasana, and that is my little um, tension sweep that I love so much. So you're going to go ahead and bring your knees together. You can interlace around your shins. Maybe grab wrists or elbows or forearms, and then, you know, that chin can come up into the chest, nose towards knees. You can squeeze toes and ankles and legs and shoulders up to ears. It's the one time I asked to do it, or one of the few times anyway. Right? Squish, 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 squish. Even your anus and your perineum and your tongue and your jaw and your eyeballs. And then go ahead and release that. And when I say you squish, that doesn't mean that you have to like go crazy pants with muscular contraction. You can just do a little squeeze. Maybe on the way out, you pause, bring the soles of the feet together and Baddha Konasana. We won't be here for long. If you're already out, take it. It's all yours. And then just like we did at the beginning of class, you're going to slide your right heel forward, lengthening the leg out, and then the left heel. Now, of course, if you would like your feet on the ground, you're going to put feet on the ground first. My shoulder blades are up at my ears from that tension squeeze. So I'm going to take a second to soften it down. Right? Notice basically what I'm saying is that Notice in your body, are your arms a little too high, too low? Is there something you can do to facilitate your shoulders softening down, your collarbone down, your jaw and your tongue, right? So whatever that is for you, make your adjustments. And then once you feel like, yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty much in there, then it's the time for stillness. And don't correlate me saying stillness to your mind having to be still. Usually that's the exact opposite of what happens. The body becomes still and the mind can become that one more comfortable all over time. The more practiced you become in this, it's not that it doesn't happen, but hopefully maybe at some point in time, right? The monkey mind is what happens when you first go into it. But then we train our brain so that maybe after we have that initial reaction, maybe we can bring it back to the breath and back to the present moment.
And you know, I like to share my experience when things that happen to me. Just some days, this is bad. Some days, it's just, you know, 20 miles, you know, going around stuff. Bring your awareness back to your breath if it was somewhere else, no worries. Any <clears throat> physical movements, wiggles, jiggles, stretches, and rotations, slides, I don't know, what feels good. I like to keep my eyes closed and really try to tune into my body and see if there's any little additional pieces my body would like to move before I come. And then when you are ready, you can start to make your way to seated. You can move through the fetal if that's not a good option for you. There's that teeter-totter we often do. Upright posture when you do get there. That feels suitable for your body, not mine, not your neighbor. Not the body you had 20 years ago. Bring those palms together in front of the chest. Take a big old inhale. With your exhale, bow your head in. And take just a moment of gratitude. And if you're going towards, um, you guys have been with me long enough, most of y'all. Uh, doing yoga today was great. Yep, sure was. I'm not saying that's where you went, but maybe try to find something that's slightly more challenging. Maybe there's a struggle you've had recently, or maybe there's someone who challenges you a little bit, or uh, I like to call them teachers, right? Is there a teacher in your life right now, a situation, a person, etc., that maybe you can be grateful because they're helping you learn lessons or whatever that may be? I try to find something that's a little more challenging. If, if you don't mind, and you can tell me no. <laughs> the light that shines within you is an honor. The light that shines within me. Namaste.